This video contains flashing lights, unsettling content, violent <laughs> jump scares and sudden loud noises. Viewer discretion and Easter eggs are hidden extras that game developers insert into games, referencing outside media or concepts. But there are many instances where the Easter egg will unnerve and startle the player. This video will cover many of the more scary additions the devs sneak into our games. These are the top 50 scariest Easter eggs in games, too. Blackwood's Monster, Everybody's Golf 4. The family-friendly theme of Everybody's Golf would feel like the last place to find anything creepy. Yet on Course 5, Hole 6, there's something quite disturbing within the trees. At the tee, zoom the camera forwards in a straight line until you reach the other side of the course. Around the trees can be seen a humanoid-shaped figure watching you. No matter where you look, the figure is always looking directly at the camera. Should you zoom too close, the figure will simply disappear from the map. The entity does not move, nor does it impede play. It seems to simply exist to catch you off guard. It's believed to be a reference to the West Virginia story of the Flatwoods monster, which in and of itself has been speculated to be related to alien encounters. It may be no threat in the game, but being relayed to real-world horror does give one a moment's pause. Sovngarde Statues, Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Do you ever get the feeling that you're being watched, even when you're alone? If you happen to venture near the statues of Sovngarde, you'll discover in this case those feelings aren't just irrational paranoia. Whilst they appear to be unremarkable decorative figures at first glance, take a moment to check again after passing them by. Notice anything different? Considering that Sovngarde is the Nordic afterlife of this universe, the implications of these statues' gazes following you as you move around are certainly enough to set your nerves on edge. Are they guardians keeping a watchful eye over the deceased as they journey to the other side? More sinister beings just waiting for the unwary to stray from that path? Whatever the case, it's probably not wise to indulge their attention towards you for too long. Alien Broadcast Animal Crossing New Leaf The world of Animal Crossing is home to many strange and intriguing individuals, but none quite as bizarre and downright eerie as the one waiting to visit you through your television in the dead of night. To experience this close encounter with an extraterrestrial entity, you'll need to tune in at precisely 3.33 a.m. on either Monday or Sunday. Piercing through the static, a shadowy alien figure with blood-red eyes will beam down to the surface from a UFO and deliver a message in a garbled, indecipherable language before vanishing back into space as quickly as it arrived. No further explanation for this phenomenon is ever given which only serves to make it even more unsettling and sinister. This easter egg also makes it return in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Ghost Handprints and Ghost Train Face Captain Toad Treasure Tracker In the hunt for the villainous Wingo, Captain Toad will venture into many weird and wonderful locales. Like many grand adventures, haunted locations can be found, and two instances have creepy easter eggs to share. Bizarre Doors and Boo's mansion hides something quite haunting. Head around the back of the level and wait for five minutes to discover some ghostly handprints mysteriously appearing on the wall. Further to this, the freight train has a hidden freight of its own. Go to the front of the train, and wait till the timer reaches approximately 312. Look out to the right, and you can see a large faded ghost face below the clouds that will remain for the rest of the stage. While certainly not as scary as many of the entries on this list, these creepy moments will give you a gentle reminder that the humble boo is still a dead spirit haunting you. Shadow 
Shadow in the Clouds, Payday 2. Being the criminal of the game, you'd think that you were the scariest one around. But there's something even more disturbing. In the Shacklethorn auction heist, out on the horizon you can see some lightning flashes among the dark clouds. The true horror is the shadowy form that is lit up each time there's a flash. A large humanoid shadow can be seen towering in the distance. Though it appears to be no threat, and completely motionless, it's still an unnerving sight for the unprepared. While no official explanation has been found, several theories have emerged. Firstly, it could be an HP Lovecraft reference, since Lovecraft is referenced by the Duke before the heist. Another theory is it could be related to a picture found in the Diamond Heist, which has a very similar looking shadowy figure towering over a similar looking structure. There is speculation this was foreshadowing a secret plot to another character known as the Dentist. However, none of these theories have been confirmed. Goat Pentagram Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 The goats of livestock require sacrifice, and unfortunately, if you want to see what they're planning, you'll have to pay the price. In order to summon them, you'll need to locate four pairs of animal dolls, regular teddy bears, elephants, ducks, and teddy bears with bow ties. Each pair must be destroyed simultaneously, so it's wise to complete this task with a partner or utilize C4. The ducks are located behind a locked exterior door and inside the barn storage areas. The normal bears are located by the fence next to the cabbage patch and in the opposite storage area behind a hay bale. The elephants can be found in a small opening in the right side of the hay bale wall. The bow-tied teddy bears are located under a stable door and through the open gate outside the farm. Once dispatched, a new pair of bigger bears in checkered clothes will appear on the floor of the barn. Destroy them at the same time and the ritual will begin. This action will summon a pair of demonic, hyper-fast, and unkillable goats who will reward all of your labor-intensive efforts with a swift and, let's face it, pretty hilarious death. Demon Gnome, Battlefield 5. After being deployed on your conquest of Eris, head to Objective A, as it's the most likely spawn point for the possessed porcelain to be found. Shoot or stab the ornament, and for a moment, nothing will appear out of the ordinary. However, it soon becomes apparent that you've taken on a permanent companion in the form of a demon gnome. Regardless of how far you travel, the little demon gnome will never be far behind, haunting you with its glowing crimson stare and maniacal laugh. There's not much else to this easter egg, other than startling you when you least expect it. The demon gnome can't be killed, and won't progress with you to the next chapter either. Spectral Echo. Chivalry. Medieval Warfare. On the multiplayer map Hillside, waging battle on the shoreline is just as dangerous as running there to find refuge. Found below to the right of the cliff, the darkness of twilight can't mask the bloodshed that awaits for someone stumbling through this site. Depending on the player's misfortune, there's a chance a weapon-wielding skeleton may manifest at a set of gravestones along the beach. An urban legend for the Age of Knights. 
One of the elements that makes the spectral echo so alarming is its unpredictability. There's no concrete backstory to give it sense, and it appears in the same location at a complete random chance. It targets the player who conjured it, and it won't stop until they are defeated. Spectral Echo has a lot of health, but players can be extra vigilant and defeat this walking nightmare for good. Ghost Stripper. Manhunt 2. Manhunt is no stranger to horror, with a grotesque murder worthy of a snuff movie. Yet this particular easter egg is something quite unique from the usual horror experience. In the Red Lake District in Cottonmouth, there's an adult club called Titty City. There are three strippers dancing. Approach the one in the middle, and look through the free view camera. After a few seconds, the easter egg will trigger. You will be confronted with a ghostly woman dressed as a stripper. However, her throat has been cut and the body is bloody. It won't be long before the ghostly form vanishes again and you're free to continue the game. The ghost is presumed to be that of the protagonist's dead wife, one of several hallucinations that could be found throughout the game portraying her gruesome fate. Statues just Cause 3. For such an action-packed, gun-toying experience that Just Cause 3 offers, this particular experience will really take you by surprise. To the west of Montana at Falco, there is a rather unique set of ruins around the mountainside. There's some curious angelic statues and a goat corpse in the mill. Everything is quite normal until you approach the goat, at which point the statues will suddenly move closer when you're not watching. No amount of helicopters and tanks can compare to this chilling moment that will take you by surprise the first time experiencing it. This easter egg is a callback to the Doctor Who antagonists, the Weeping Angels, which only move when not being watched while striking unlucky prey within the blink of an eye. The question is, with all the weapons at your disposal, can you fight back against these horrors? Or is it better to withdraw and return to agitating the local dictator? Portrait, Zombie Army 4, Dead War. Found towards the end of the Don't Tap the Glass mission of the Zombie Zoo chapter, this paranormal portrait proves that not even inanimate objects are safe from corruption. After completing all your objectives and opening the emergency exit door leading to the safe room, you can find a bloodstained picture of a Regency-style woman hanging on the wall. Given that it appears serene enough to spike the blood, you may be tempted to take a closer look. In case that wasn't enough, she also vomits blood and gore towards you as the light above the portrait goes haywire, showering you with sparks and electricity. Given that you'll have fought your way through hordes of the undead to make it this far, you'll likely want to make a hasty exit from this place. Evil Tiki Tony Hawk's Underground Tony Hawk's Underground has a number of vast maps to explore and discover many hidden treats. The Evil Tiki, however, is one of the more unnerving discoveries to find in your travels. Located on the Hawaii level, head past the back of the International Trinket Palace to find an evil-looking tiki statue. Should you approach its mouth and jump in, you're teleported to a lava-filled hellscape with a fire-breathing tiki in the middle. The demonic laughter can be heard all around you, which, combined with the demonic look, can catch you off guard. If you fall into the lava, you're teleported back outside, wondering if it was all real or some elaborate hallucination. There's also a hidden old-school icon that can be collected to unlock Venice from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This easter egg is based on the Hawaiian culture surrounding tikis and their relation to gods and demigods having wood carvings in their image. The more aggressive the carving, the more destructive the deity. This particular tiki likely relates to a very aggressive or evil deity. 
since it whisks curious individuals away to such a horror-filled place. Just be thankful you're allowed to leave, and not be trapped for eternity. Lindenvale Graveyard Statues The Witcher 3 To meet this pair of statue stalkers, you'll first have to traverse the Lindenvale and complete the Monster in the Cemetery contract on offer from the Notice Board. After slaying the Hag and collecting your reward, returning to the cemetery will reveal something new has arrived. A pair of angelic statues flanking either side of the doorway to the small crypt. Whilst they appear innocuous enough at first glance, entering inside the building will result in a startling surprise when you turn back. The statues will have moved from their position to stare directly at you. They continue to follow you throughout the graveyard, freezing in place every time you look at them, turning towards you every time you look away. Geralt will even comment on the statues, wondering exactly what's going on. Given all the other horrifying entities plaguing the land, the fact that these statues actually provoke a reaction from him speaks volumes about just how standout this encounter is. This easter egg is a clear reference to the Weeping Angels from the Doctor Who franchise, utilizing a similar style of movement. Dashboard Menu, Xbox. While most people expect to be unnerved while playing their games, it's a different story when it's your own console. If you go into the dashboard of the original Xbox and leave it idle for a prolonged amount of time, you can hear a new type of sound over the droning ambience. The sound of radio static and a robotic voice can be heard coming through the menu. The message is incomprehensible, but some people claimed to hear the words die human in the middle of the jumbled wording. After several years, a Microsoft employee admitted that these sounds were actually public domain NASA transmissions from space, but heavily scrambled. They were added in to give the effect of the console being futuristic and alien to other consoles. Crying Sarcophagus, Starbound. Among the easter eggs on this list, this one is especially haunting when you consider the context. Deep within the Sovereign Temple, hidden behind laser traps and devious puzzles, lies a chamber with several sarcophagi. The avian culture followed Egyptian ideas in how they buried their dead in ornate sarcophagi. However, the puzzling feature is the human-shaped one alongside them. This becomes more alarming when scanning the item and discovering a faint cry from within. <laughs> this in and of itself is creepy, but when exploring more of avian lore, it becomes haunting. <laughs> Many years ago, the avians sometimes had human companions with them as friends. Avian tradition meant that when avians died and were buried, they would be buried with their human companions, even if they were still alive. Humans were being buried alive in these tombs alongside their dead companions. When you really think about it, this is one of the more disturbing and haunting concepts that can make your blood run cold. Television, 4.44 AM. Harvest Moon, Friends of Mineral Town. Harvest Moon is well known for being a family-friendly farming simulator. The last possible place to find something scary. 
However, there is a very specific Easter egg that may seem weird to some while unnerving to others. Viewing the TV in your house at 4.44 a.m. triggers a rather bizarre Easter egg. The dialogue box will open and close on an infinite loop, locking you out of the game and forcing you to reset. If playing more Friends of Mineral Town, then you get something a bit different. The TV shows static and a long stream of Japanese characters will fill the text box, which can be fast forwarded if you mash the buttons. Both of these encounters are odd, but what makes this scary is the association to Japanese culture. The number four is associated with death in Japan. Combine this with Harvest Moon's cultural origins, and you have a rather unnerving connection to death in a happy farming simulator. Perhaps it's best to go to bed earlier and tend to your farm the next morning. Elizabeth Corpses in the Water, Bioshock Infinite, Burial at Sea The Burial at Sea DLC makes a return to the world of Rapture, but this time with some fresh faces. While Rapture has been known for containing many scary creatures, this particular easter egg may leave you scratching your head trying to figure it out. At the start of Episode 2 while playing as Elizabeth, you can clear out some large circular rubble that reveals the body of Elizabeth herself. This triggers a flashback sequence similar to the start of Bioshock Infinite. You're back on the rowboat with the twins. However, if you look out to the right side, you can make out the form of corpses in the water, with some of them looking very much like Elizabeth herself. The flashback does not last long before you're thrown back into the game. Many theories have emerged about these corpses, but two stand out the most. First, they can be the corpses of the plane that crashed in the first Bioshock game. The other theory is that all the corpses are other versions of Elizabeth from different realities floating in the water Neither have been confirmed or denied, but it does give one a moment's pause to consider the possibilities. Ghost Girl, Pokemon X and Y. This creepy and unsettling ghost girl can be found on the second floor of an office building on North Boulevard in Lumio City. Upon exiting the lift, the music will abruptly stop, accompanied by the screen flashing between pitch black and back to light ominously for several moments. Once the flashes subside, you'll discover a hex maniac waiting just behind you, having apparently appeared from thin air without the trainer noticing. What the player might notice is that the girl does not have a walking animation and just slides along the ground. Coupled with her sudden arrival and equally sudden disappearance seems to strongly indicate something paranormal is amiss. She doesn't make any move to harm you, but rather appears to study you for several moments before declaring you are not the one and vanishing without a trace who exactly this girl is, who she's looking for, and why she appears to haunt this building are questions that go unanswered for the remainder of the game. The atmosphere her presence generates, along with her vague messaging, do little to imply the intentions towards the individual she is seeking out. Demonic Painting, Viscera Cleanup Detail, House of Horror. Given that this DLC tasks you with cleaning up and clearing out a haunted mansion, you'll likely already be expecting grisly discoveries, disturbing secrets, and terrifying paranormal occurrences. There's all manner of horror-themed easter eggs waiting to be found within these walls. These include axes embedded in the bathroom door, a taxidermized deer head laughing at you, and the iconic items from several prominent slasher villains like Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers. One of the most unnerving and unexpected ones has to be the painting depicting the Last Supper, hanging proudly in the dining room. Given all the horrors you've been witnessing, you might choose to gaze upon the painting for a little hope and inspiration. Stare too long, and the painting quickly takes on a much more sinister tone.
Jesus will switch from a benevolent figure to a green-skinned, tentacled, Cthulhu-esque abomination. The serene blue sky outside will change into a fiery hellscape, and the table will begin to drip with blood, and the food morphs into pieces of flesh and internal organs. When even Jesus is corrupted by the dark forces inhabiting this establishment, it's a sure sign that you're probably intruding somewhere no sane person should be venturing. House of Screams, Saints Row the Third. From wacky weapons to insane stunts, Saints Row is no stranger to the weird and wild. Yet the House of Screams stands out more from the chaotic fun than the Third Street Saints engage in. On the central island, in the southwestern corner, is a rundown boarded up house. Initially, it's no different than any other house, but as you approach, the sound of screams can be heard from within. This house is the only one to have this audio effect, yet there's no way to enter to investigate. Perhaps there's survivors inside, left in a perpetuate state of horror and despair. All you can do is back away and ignore their cries as you return to the mindless mayhem Steelport has to offer. Radio Unknown, Pokemon Gold. Whilst journeying through the ruins of ALF, the only location in the game where the mysterious unknown can be found, tuning to the Pokegear radio can yield some unusual results. Instead of soothing music or the local talk show, you'll discover an unnerving audio transmission. <laughs> While the origin of these sounds is never explained, it's theorized to be the unknown attempting to communicate through the Pokegear. This is backed up by the theory that the unknown are the basis for all languages in the Pokeverse. Unfortunately, the human trainer is in no position to understand what it is they're trying to say. Given that they appear to have no issue attacking the trainer as they wander through the ruins, there's a strong possibility the message is a warning for you to leave. Ghostly Figures, Dear Esther. Dear Esther is an early example of a non-threatening yet thought-provoking walking simulator. This creepy Easter egg may make you question the non-threatening part. Throughout the adventure, there's a number of shadowy figures that can be seen. Sometimes they're looking out over a cliff, sometimes flashing by a window. One can even be found in the reflection of a puddle. Some can be viewed clearly while others are very brief or only emerge at the side of your vision, leaving you wondering if you really saw anything. While these shadowy forms display no hostile intent, they will likely have you second-guessing what you just saw as you continue your travels. Very little is known about the origins of these ghostly forms, however, given the metaphorical nature of the game, it's possible that they are the ghosts of those who came to these shores in their final moments before passing on. Mount Gordo Ghost, Grand Theft Auto V On the top of Mount Gordo lies a haunting secret. Between the hours of 11 p.m. and 12 a.m., a ghostly apparition of a young woman can be seen floating above a small bloodstain. If you try to get closer to her, she'll start to vanish before fully disappearing, making you wonder if it was part of your imagination. If you're brave enough to get up close, you'll realize the bloodstain actually spells out a single word. Jock. The easter egg doesn't end there, however, as there's some lore on a website you can access on the game's phone, titled Who Killed Lenora Johnson? 
An article can be found titled Blood on the Rocks, showcasing a newspaper about the death of Jolene Cranley Evans, wife of Jock Cranley. The couple was having problems in their marriage, and one night, Jock pushed Jolene over the cliffs, killing her. Jock was arrested, but was released without charges after they concluded the death was accidental. Maybe this is Jolene's way of getting revenge for her death, spreading the word on her true murderer. Ben drowned. Ben and Ed. In the ninth level of the game, you'll have to traverse a long path in the near pitch black room, the only source of light being colored tiles that only appear when you're nearby. During one section, you'll be told to go left. However, there's a path that can be seen in front of you. Go towards the front path and go right, where you'll find yourself in front of a dark void. It's recommended to detach your head and toss it into the void, though you can still manage to get through with your body intact. You'll find yourself back on the colored tiles, where you need to keep going down and down until eventually you see an opening to your right. At the end of the large, liminal hallway is another open door on the right. Here you'll have to press three separate red buttons, allowing a secret entrance to open. This will lead you to a long, dark hallway, only illuminated by a couple spotlights above. At the end is Ben, standing motionless like a statue. When you go up to him, the head of Han's showmaster appears in front, leaking a black fluid from every orifice on his face. The words, Ben drowns, above him. This is a clear reference to the famous Legend of Zelda creepypasta, Ben drowned. As soon as the text goes away, your body explodes, restarting the level like nothing happened. The Whispering Forest of Brandywine Drop, Red Dead Redemption 2. There's a forest near Brandywine Drop of Roanoke Valley you wouldn't want to get lost in. At first glance, it seems no more foreboding than any other forest on the map. However, you may already be familiar with the local folk's cautionary tale, told in a film about a young couple from Ansburg who thought the same thing. For Ethel Beauchard and Eugene Hooten, a tryst in this forest ended with a horrific murder and an execution. There's a stillness in the air and a sense of involuntary containment as you try to navigate a path under the canopy of tall trees. Then the whispers begin to rush by like the wind. The whispers shift into an unsettling conversation. Then there will be the unmistakably sound of haunting laughter. A possibility that the next disembodied voice to laugh in these woods could soon be yours may prompt you to stop listening and just ride on out of there. Idle and Hat Kid's Ship, A Hat in Time the adventures of Hat Kid will take her to all manner of worlds, but who would have guessed something creepy was found in her own ship? If you remain on the ship for roughly 25 minutes, the normal and calming soundtrack will end. Before long, it will be replaced by an eerie and unnerving soundtrack, making you wonder if something had found its way on board, stalking you. The shift in tone will make you wonder just how safe the ship is in between levels. It's unknown why this easter egg exists in the game, but best guess is it's a joke put in by the game devs to encourage players to get a move on and pick a level to explore. Boss Room Ambience Splatoon For a game so full and fun as Splatoon, it's hard to believe there could be anything disturbing enough to make this list. Yet, if you take the time to listen to the ambience in the boss rooms, you'll hear more than you bargained for. Before and after a boss fight, 
The background is silent, save for a few curious sounds. The sound of a train, the clanking of metal, and the sounds of subtle screaming can be heard. This was repeated in Splatoon 2 for boss levels prior to engaging the boss itself. Once you recognize the sounds, it becomes impossible to ignore. While it's effective at building tension before a boss fight, the most accepted theory will make your blood run cold. The theory goes that these noises are related to the Octo Expansion plotline in Splatoon 2, which involved a subway system leading to a giant blender. Octolings would be put inside and broken down to their raw materials. Suddenly, the boss room ambience takes on a more disturbing tone. The thought of how many lives were ground down in such a horrific way is far more disturbing than anything else this game has to offer. Three D Test Engine, McDonald's Treasureland Adventure. For a game based on the child-friendly McDonald's franchise, it's unusual to find anything more unnerving than the clown mascot himself. Nevertheless, one can be found before even playing the game's story. On the password screen, enter the code balloon gem the letter M clown, then press start three times. On the third press, an explosion can be heard and the game will reset. However, if you are fast enough to press and hold up and left on the D-pad before the reset, the Easter egg will commence. A 3D test engine will be active and the password box will spin, pan and zoom based on button inputs. While you play around with this, a creepy ambience will be playing in the background, unlike any of the songs heard in the entire game. This easter egg remained undiscovered for 30 years as it was hidden and likely not intended to be scary, but it is definitely an unnerving experience. Perfectly suited for a game featuring a mascot that has brought children to tears. Slide Projector, Fear 2, and Project Origin. The Fear series is no stranger to spooky moments and horrific monsters beyond our imagination. Yet this unusual easter egg proves to be quite a haunting experience in itself, despite being totally harmless. One of the rooms in the elementary school has a slide projector that seems to be running a simple slideshow on its own. Simple images with captions attached to a cycle on a loop, while sounds can be heard in the background. Teacher. Television. If you listen closely, you can hear a voice responding to each of the slides, but the responses are out of sync with their respective slides. Snake. The responses give an insight into Alma's perspective regarding the different subjects. Such examples include the brain being a playground, playground. the teacher being a snake, snake, and the playground being the beginning. This is the beginning. Later into the level, you'll come across another slide projector. This one seems to have multiple slides placed across the viewing area, manipulating and distorting the images even more. The brain, now expanding in size, showing Alma's power increasing to dangerous levels. The snake image overlapping, looking like a woman's uterus. Help her. The teacher image distorted to look like Snake Fist, a character you've only met through transmissions. Snake. The PowerPoint and playground images look like suggestive sexual depictions of foreshadowing later on into the game. 
The most accepted theory is the desync between images and responses, as well as the names mentioned, indicating Alma's distorted view of the world. The ghostly voice gives you a gentle reminder that you're still dangerously close to Alma as you explore the school's hallways. She. Please don't touch anything, 3D. The tempting big red button on the machine can be too much to resist. This machine leads to all manner of surprises, such as mass destruction, demonic summoning, and even making coffee. For this particular easter egg, hit the big red button 16 times to reveal a hammer. Then use the hammer to smash the clock to the left, and move all three hands on the clock to 6. This will trigger a scene where blood oozes from the screen and walls, while heavy breathing can be heard behind you. Looking behind you reveals a ghostly woman, standing in a pentagram. Her eyes will glow, and then the scene will cut to black and return to normal. Should you resist the urge for 15 seconds, you will be awarded an achievement for holding your nerve. Terry Cotter Demon Army, Fable 2. Ever been paranoid of statues? How about an entire army of them to drive you to insanity? Accessible through the Wraith Marsh Demon Door in Albion, the hero can find an unassuming cottage in a picturesque meadow. Inside, the player can find several books and journal entries that reveal that, after losing his mother, Terry sought to find the Knight's Aberrant, an army of artificial soldiers given life by a magician. Said army can be found in a cavern towards the rear of the house. There's nothing welcoming about the atmosphere their presence generates. Rows upon rows of unmoving jet-black suits of armor stand amongst the rocks, driving your levels of paranoia through the roof. Even more frightening, exploring the upper floor of the cottage will lead you to a room occupied by even more of these knights and the skeletal remains of Terry himself. Among the remains lies a journal entry that devolves into insane mutterings about the knights constantly watching him. It's clear that his final moments with his new friends were anything but pleasant. Even worse, other books throughout the home reveal that whilst the knights aberrant were believed by some to be benevolent entities, others speculated that their true purpose was to spread madness and despair. Smoke Monster, Just Cause 2. In the top left-hand corner of the map, you'll be able to find an island called Hantu, an Indonesian word that means ghost or demon. Arriving at the island, your plane, helicopter, or boat will catch on fire and crash immediately due to EMP towers around the area. You don't seem to be the first who crashed here, as you can find a crashed airplane with a sign made out of rocks and sticks nearby declaring, Search an arrow pointing to the right. If you follow the arrow, you'll find a small hatch in the grass, rusted and overtaken by the environment. If you decide to go deeper into the island, you'll find an odd, unnerving sight. A Panawan elite soldier, covered in a heavy cloud of black smoke. This is a reference to the 2000s television series, Lost. Unlike the rest of the soldiers, he doesn't attack you, instead following you once you see him. While he can be killed, it'll take a great deal of time since he has a higher health meter compared to other NPCs. The Green Flu. Payday. In the level No Mercy, 
you're assigned to find a patient with a rare infectious disease, titled the Green Flu. Once found, you're then told to draw blood from the patient several times, and quickly escape from the hospital before any police arrive. Throughout the heist, you can encounter several easter eggs inside of the hospital. The first one being that the whole level is from the first Left 4 Dead game, Mercy Hospital. You'll notice that the patient has pale white skin, dark veins, and boils forming on them. The patient suddenly starts twitching and coughing heavily, a sound similar to the special infection in Left 4 Dead, The Smoker. Near the end of the level, inside of the hospital's morgue, you can find several zipped up black body bags. Occasionally, the bags will jerk, almost like something is trying to escape from the inside. The only unzipped body inside of the room is a dead woman on a gurney, her body looking similar to a common infected in the game. Things take a turn, however, when the police shut down the power and you're tasked to restore it. Near the reception desk, there's a locked closet door with a witch visible behind it. If you stare for too long or shine your flashlight in her direction, she'll take notice. Throughout the whole level, it feels haunting, realizing that you're at ground zero of the apocalypse and you yourself are probably already infected with the green flu. Creepy Clown Video, Roblox With a game as child-friendly and harmless as Roblox, it's very surprising to find anything that could be truly creepy. Nevertheless, this easter egg is disturbing to behold. Public servers do not allow access to the admin commands, but private servers will allow specific users access for general management of the server. Within those commands lie two very specific ones, I love you and always watching. Once either one of these has been entered, a video will play showing a man dressed as a clown rubbing his clown face in a really disturbing manner. There is no context for this video and it's so out of place that it's quite frightening to encounter. The easter egg was eventually removed from the game in later updates. It's unknown why this video existed in the game's code, but it's assumed to be a joke put in by the game developers. Why they felt it was something to put into a child-friendly game remains unknown even to this day. Nuketown Mannequins Call of Duty Black Ops 3 To trigger this easter egg, you and your teammates must find every mannequin scattered throughout the map and shoot off their arms within the first two minutes of starting a match. Done correctly, an unsettling chime will punctuate the air, and the mannequins will take on a life of their own, stalking you and your fellow soldiers across the map. To make things even more unnerving, they also take a page from the playbook of the Weeping Angels from Doctor Who. The mannequins freeze in place every time you look at them, and then move closer whenever you turn your back, with their footsteps creeping up behind you audibly as they do so. Whilst this impromptu game of red light green light is certainly creepy, they can still be gunned down, although more will continuously spawn throughout the match to ensure you're never safe from them. A few other variants of this easter egg are also available. Shooting off the heads of the mannequins will instead cause them to animate fully, swarming in overwhelming numbers like a horde of ravenous zombies. Shooting both the arms and the heads gives you the worst of both worlds, with the mannequins taking on the weeping angel mannerisms of the first easter egg and the massive zombie horde characteristic of the second. Staring Statues, Dead by Daylight Whilst it may be hard to spot on account of you being busy either running for your life or chasing down your latest victim, the decorative statues on the Sanctum of Wrath map in the realm of the Yamaoka Estate have a little surprise in store for you. Scattered around the shrine outside are dozens of identical stone figures which will continually turn to look towards you every time you glance away from and turn back to them. Whilst they don't move from their positions or attack you in any way, the fact that they just will not stop staring at you is plenty disturbing on its own. To make matters worse, 
Exactly how and why the statues are able to do this is never explained. It may be the result of some dark curse that could have also played a part in the creation of the spirit, or possibly the entity itself manipulating the environment to further terrify the survivors. Either way, try not to let their piercing gazes get to you too much, or else the next thing that pierces through you could well be the killer's cold, hard steel. Nine one one call. Cry of fear. After a nearly fatal car accident, Simon Henriksen, a depressed teenager, must fend for himself against various supernatural creatures and even his own psyche. Throughout the game, you'll have to use your cell phone as a flashlight in order to traverse the dark city. Most players will immediately ask the question, why can't you call the police? Well, if you pull up your phone and press Z on your keyboard, you actually are given the chance to do so. You can dial 911 or 112 onto the cell phone. Either one will end up with the same result. A loud, piercing scream with something snarling in the background can be heard. The sounds of a chainsaw can also be made out prior to the call ending, with the sound splitting of flesh and dripping of blood. You can only do this once per playthrough, as whoever answered the phone is probably no longer with the living. This small Easter egg lets the player know that with every nightmare Simon experiences, no one will be there to help him. Door. Phasmophobia. You would think that the starting lobby is a place of safety, especially in a game about ghost hunting. However, phasmophobia even takes the safety of the lobby room away from you. You'll already feel unnerved by the glowing eyes from the ceiling space, or the skeleton hanging out of the locker. But the real horror is found in the slightly open door. Upon approach, it seems harmless enough, but once you press your face against it, you're met with a ghostly figure in the doorway. It only lasts for a brief second and only triggers once per session, but the first encounter will leave you paranoid of any open doors going forward. As of update 0.7, this easter egg was removed when the office layout was changed. The easter egg itself is nothing more than a jump scare moment for the unprepared, but this will surely wake you up before you set out to face the real threats of the spiritual world. Yabai Picture, Utaho no Tatari 2 Drawn heavily from Japanese folklore, Utaho no Tatari focuses on the horrors of being cursed. Towards that end, many creepy and disturbing things will be found here. Yet among them all, the Yabai Picture remains the most unnerving of the lot. After Day 3, the level will open with a visit to a Shinto Shrine. Before entering, there are three Torii Gates to the left, as is often found at Shinto Shrines. After walking through them in order from bottom to top, walk to the edge of the screen and interact with the end of the map. The easter egg will be triggered, causing an unskippable stream of text to appear on screen. The screen will then cut to black, before revealing the picture of a dead-looking female entity alongside an unnerving audio track. Once triggered, the easter egg cannot be escaped and you must reset the game to proceed. Torii gates have often been described as being a portal between our world and the spiritual world in Shinto culture. The implications here could be that we're passing from our world to the next via our foolish action of crossing the gates. Haunted House, Dying Light the following. While Dying Light is no stranger to horror with its zombie population, this easter egg stands out from it all. Found inside a lonely house in the countryside area, you must locate the cupboard underneath the stairs. Not only is there a Harry Potter easter egg here, but there's a skull on a shelf. Interact with it several times to make it spin and activate the easter egg. 
The front door locks, windows will slam shut, and a ghost will drop from above and attack you. Should you explore the second floor, another ghost will ambush you from behind. The final horror can be found behind the boarded up door, where there lies a dead woman in a bathtub full of blood. Should you survive all this, you'll then be able to leave and go from the spectral horrors to the very real undead ones. Reverse School Recordings Outlast 2 In Outlast 2, Blake Langerman and his wife Lynn are stranded in a battle between two cults, each of them out for blood. Throughout the game, the player can record the horrors around them on their camcorder. If you play back the recordings of the nightmarish school, you'll find your footage to just be static and garbled audio playing in the background. After reversing the footage, you'll be able to make out the voice of Father Loudermilch, the teacher at the school you have been wandering, and the abuser and killer of the player's childhood friend, Jessica. You remove the temptation beyond the flesh and the head was able to resist. Thank you, God. You killed my child. Thank you. Thank you. You never told the soul. You let the small sorrow of her suicide wash over the unacceptable tragedy of her mother. The messages are prayers from a psychotic mind, thanking God for killing Jessica, how vulnerable she was, and most disturbingly, how he wants to do it to other students. With how notorious this series is for jump scares and body horror, these hidden messages are the most unsettling due to the fact that this can actually happen. Blue World Arcade Machine, Five Nights at Freddy's, Security Breach. Given that you're trapped inside an arcade complex after hours with a psychotic killer and several murder animatronics, you'd be forgiven for trying to find something that grants you a temporary respite. Unfortunately, even the seemingly innocuous arcade cabinets can have some nasty surprises in store for you. Found in the secret area of the daycare attendance room, which is accessible from Fazbear Theater after taking photos of cutouts of the four original animatronics scattered around the map with the Fazcam, this arcade game appears to be little more than an innocent Balloon Boy themed clone of Flappy Bird at first glance. However, keen eyed players will notice sinister purple glitches appearing on the screen on occasion. Making contact with one of them causes the game to take on a much more frightening appearance with a glitching screen, the gentle scenery replaced with a bizarre purple pathway, and the area bathed in hellish orange light. Follow the path for long enough, and you'll uncover a secret ending to the minigame, although chances are you'll wish you hadn't. It consists of the eclipse face expanding to envelop the entire screen, its unblinking stare burrowing into your soul as the words, Good night, crackle across the screen in barely legible purple lettering. It speaks volumes that, in a game overflowing with scary moments, this one in particular stands out as one of the most unique and memorable of them all. Exorcism Hitman 2 Found in the aquarium section of the Kronstadt building on the Miami map is a crash test dummy with a life of its own. You'll have to bring a sniper rifle with you in order to see it for yourself, as this easter egg will not trigger otherwise. Above the shark model is a window with a dummy and a sign reading Live Exercise in Progress. Zooming in with the rifle will cause a crudely written O and M to appear on the glass. Line these letters up so the sign reads Live Exorcism in Progress, and the dummy will start moving of its own accord.
slowly raising its arms to point at you and turning its head to stare directly at you if you let your scope linger on it long enough. This would already be scary enough on its own, but there's an additional jump scare in store once you stop looking down the sights. The dummy suddenly appears directly behind you, arms outstretched as if to grab a hold of you. Luckily for you, it doesn't move in any closer afterwards. Golden Freddy, Five Nights at Freddy's. A secret fifth animatronic haunting the hallways of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Golden Freddy may not make his presence known as often as the other four, but he certainly leaves a memorable and terrifying impression on players when he does. When checking camera 2B on the CCTV system, there's a very rare chance that the poster of Freddy Fazbear on the wall will instead display an image of Golden Freddy accompanied by the creepy, disembodied laughter of a child. Upon returning to the office, you'll find him waiting for you, slumped against the desk in a pose chillingly reminiscent of a freshly murdered corpse, his black eyeless sockets staring into your soul. Take too long and Golden Freddy will strike, shoving his face right up against the camera in a jump scare. This is unique in that it is the only jump scare that will close the entire game, rather then game over. The only way to get rid of him is by flipping up the camera monitor and then flipping it back down again. This will cause him to vanish as suddenly and inexplicably as he arrived, allowing you to continue your night shift. Joker Intro Scare Batman Arkham Knight just when you thought the Clown Prince of Crime can finally be put down, he comes prepared with a final punchline. When you first start Arkham Knight, the first thing you'll have to do is put Joker's body to rest by cremating him. It's a grueling two minutes, with Frank Sinatra's I Got You Under My Skin playing faintly in the background. As the body burns, becoming a charcoal black, the only thing recognizable in the husk is the familiar white to the smile of the Joker. It'll then transition into the logo of the game, as Commissioner Gordon proclaims that this is how the Batman died. However, if you start the game on New Game Plus, you'll be treated to a more horrific sight. The opening cutscene will start the same. However, as the flames overtake the Joker's body, Ouija Board Basement, Layers of Fear With a name like Layers of Fear, it's expected that you'll find all manner of disturbing sights during your descent into madness. This particular easter egg can be found before even getting into the majority of the game, and has most likely been missed. Near the start of the game, there is a specific locked door in the basement that will only open if your calendar on your console or PC is set to October 31st. The door leads to a room where a Ouija board can be found and interacted with. Depending on the words spelt out, different events can occur, such as spawning in ghostly figures, creepy sounds, and even the almighty Cthulhu will pay a visit. There are a lot of different words that can produce a variety of effects, such as magic, dog, game, and many others. Considering the room only opens on Halloween, it's easy to understand the reference here. <laughs> Chair Room Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, Karamari Hospital Spooky's Mansion is already scary enough, but with the addition of the mysterious Karamari Hospital, more disturbing experiences can be found. One such instance is a lone chair found in its own room. Taking a seat will trigger a sequence of unnerving sights, starting with a snowing-like vision, 
blood trail leading from the door to the chair and escalating to seeing a haunting, grinning face in random places. After a few minutes, your vision will black out and you're forced out of the chair, leaving behind a ghostly shadow, preventing you from sitting back down. This is all you will experience the first time. Upon successive playthroughs, you can locate the sacred sword in one of the offices. If you use this on the ghostly shadow, it will disappear, allowing you to sit down again. However, the second time is very different. Shortly after sitting down, a loud noise plays and the screen shakes, followed by a unique death sequence. The text indicates you were teleported away to another world that consumed you. Monica Jump Scare, Doki Doki Literature Club. Harmless, friendly faces greet you upon joining a new high school club. Their hidden natures, meanwhile, lie in wait, always waiting for the facades to fritz, for the smiles to fade to static. The initiation into this sharp, twisted web starts out just as puzzling verbal exchanges between friends. Later on, you will see their tormented expressions. There are plenty of shocking moments to be witnessed. And then there's Monica. At the beginning of the game, Monica is introduced as a warm-hearted social barfly. However, if you're recording the game using OBS or XSplit near the story's end, Monica's final interaction with you will include a surprise. While she seems as pleasant as ever, the lighting on the walls and flames dancing from the windows tell a different story. Monica wants to show why you should never cross her, or record her. Speaking directly to the audience rather than to your character, a word of advice? Don't look too closely. Hi Dimension, welcome to Hanwell. Few games are more unsettling than those that reflect a nightmarish vision on an everyman's neighborhood. Hanwell's open world turns sideways in a house on Lock Lane. However, the desire for a collectible, a canister of Dr. DNA, leads the main character through the door like a beacon. At first, the warnings scrawled on the house's wallpaper at every turn may amuse someone as they shudder. When the messages break the fourth wall in communication, the amusement halts. It knows why the player is there. Trying to leave the house with the prize will activate its dimensional travel function. The character, now armed with a baseball bat, winds up on the surface of a vast dark lake. Giant eyeballs are now watching, turning with the character's every movement. Then the true threat emerges, glowing orange humanoids crawling towards the player. Panic, hit them with the bat, or run ahead. They'll follow until you die. During the chase, the white moonlight shimmers in fragments on the lake, leading the way to an escape. That is, if the glowing creatures don't catch them first. Upon finding the exit, the player will end up back in reality, as the street lights blink back on. Zalgo, Yume Tuki. Many consider Yume Tuki to be the scariest and most unsettling game compared to Yume Niki and Dot Flow. The game itself contains many creepy events and hidden easter eggs, Zalgo Room being one of them. The room itself is a reference to the creepypasta Zalgo a demonic eldritch entity known to hijack various forms of media. The Magnet Room is an area you can access in the Red Streetlight World, a room filled with magnets that bounces your character around. In order to get to the Easter Egg, activate the machine in the southwest corner of the room and turn on one of the blue balls. There's a fenced-off section of wall on top of the room with a crevice in it 
head directly south from where the crevice is pointing before going into the north area of the blue cube. Push your character to the crevice and you can then interact with it. As soon as you do that, however, you'll soon wish you hadn't. A large, pale face becomes visible in the background, with various tentacles covered in eyeballs attached to it. All the while, a distorted jumble of sounds can be heard. The more you wait in this area, the more the face distorts, almost like a wax statue melting, jaw unhinging with the eyeball drooping. Along with that are the sounds of wet, fleshy noises and many forms of laughter. These sounds will speed up with an intensifying, pounding noise. As if someone or something is approaching you fast. After a few minutes, you'll be dropped off into the intestines maze, which many players might consider a mercy. If you didn't find an entry you expected, please check our original Top 45 Scariest Easter Eggs video to see if we had mentioned it there. Did you enjoy the video? Why not click the bell icon and subscribe to see more content from us at Tats.videos. And now let's see the creators of this video.